When on a fat loss journey, it's important to track both your progress as well as your routine and your workouts. But as a woman, there are certain guidelines that you do need to adhere to in order to avoid frustration and also to make good progress. And we'll discuss those in today's video. Between the ages of puberty and menopause, all women's bodies have a very elegant mechanism that periodically prepares them for pregnancy. And if conception doesn't happen, then the entire cycle repeats every four weeks or so. And here is where the tracking challenges lie because of the hormonal changes involved. To give you some perspective, when men reach adulthood, their primary sex hormone, testosterone, reaches a certain level and essentially stays there maybe until their late 30s or early 40s. And after that, the levels may decline by about a percentage per year. In the case of women, the two primary sex hormones are progesterone and estrogen. And these can vary by up to 250 to 750 percent in every cycle. Let's repeat, for a man, the hormonal change can be about 10 to 15 percent over a decade. For a woman, the change can be 250 to 750 percent over four weeks and that is essentially going to repeat in every cycle. And the challenge with tracking lies here. If you're on a fat loss journey, it's almost like having to track four different people through the course of one cycle. And pretty much every woman client of mine has attested to this. There are days when you feel strong and energetic, other days full of lethargy. Days when you feel lean and light and other days when you feel completely bloated. And of course, there are days when hunger is stable and everything's under control. And then there are days when you have extreme cravings. And mind you, each woman can experience these swings in various degrees through her cycle. And the problem is that most fat loss programs, trainers, nutritionists hardly take this into account. So here are some tracking guidelines that I introduce all my women clients to very early on in my program. First, take time to analyze and understand how your body feels during various phases of your cycle and also how these may vary across cycles. Second, avoid weighing yourself very frequently. If you'd like to do it daily, record yourself but don't do daily analysis. Analyze your weight on week one of this cycle with week one of the next cycle, week two of this cycle with week two of the next cycle, week three with week three and so on. Simple shifts in water retention can change your weight by a couple of pounds on consecutive days. The last thing you want is to be demoralized by this because it is not due to fat gain or fat loss. Next, acknowledge the times when you feel lethargic or weak and go easy on yourself during these times. Skip your workouts and instead spend time on leisurely activities. Similarly, plan your workouts when you know you're going to be at your strongest. Set yourself tough targets in terms of strength and cardiovascular training and that way you can enjoy the progress that you're making. Next point, don't try to fight cravings with willpower. Instead use concepts like fasting or short intense training sessions to earn yourself that slight amount of indulgence without fat gain. And most important of all, aim to get to your goals over a few months. This will allow you to analyze how your body responds over a few cycles and tweak the routine to make it work for you. At the end of the day, tracking your fat loss progress is not difficult or complicated, but there are physiological caveats that you need to work with. And do understand that these caveats exist because fat loss and voluntary calorie control were really not a concern through most of evolution. And finally, there is a silver lining to all of this. Hidden within these caveats is an invaluable marker of your overall health. And we will discuss that in detail in our next video. If you've enjoyed the way Trulene presents the science behind fat loss, health and fitness, please like, subscribe and do share these videos.